Hello, welcome to Making Photos, I'm Ian M. Butterfield. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create oil and water images. I went through this a while back uh, on one of my live streams. So let's pop in the TARDIS, head back in time and join the live stream as I explain exactly how it's done. You've got four screens on there. We've got the main camera over here, which is the one when I'm just talking to camera, I will talk over there. I've got a camera over here, which is just about capturing me, uh, which shows the whole uh, setup area. I've got the um, uh, a little GoPro camera down here, which is showing you the inside of the, uh, uh, the dish. And finally, if I nip over here and change my screen on there, the fourth camera is good old Lightroom, uh, which will be tethering in a little while. Right, let me just explain the setup that we've got here for, um, uh, for this demo. Uh, it's basically oil and water, that's all there is to it, but how do we do the photos? Well, we start off with a dish like uh, this. Uh, just plain dish. Now, when you buy something like this, you need to be very careful to make sure it's not one that's got Pyrex written underneath it, uh, because that will come through on your images. Mine has got one little mark from the manufacturing in there, but I've managed to shoot round it, and it's small enough that if it does appear in any shot, I can clone it out. So that's what we're using. Now you'll notice it's on a, a couple of boxes to just raise it up. But the way this works is uh, we're going to have oil and water in here, uh, but we're going to then put something underneath it uh, to show the, um, to be the colors in there. But we need that out of focus. So that's why we need a, diff a distance between. So I've just put it on a couple of boxes. Let me go to tether on here and then we can uh, get that going properly. Tether capture, start tethered capture, uh, standard sort of details in there and OK. Right, it's found the camera, right. So if I go live on there, that's better. Uh, and all it's showing you in there is just basically looking down onto my table in the um, in the dish and bring it in so I haven't got edges on there and I need to move that up just a little bit on there. Right, so first thing to do with all this is we need to put some water into the uh, uh, into the dish. So I've got a jug of water and I'll just pour that in and you just want a, a little layer of water in there. It doesn't need to be a huge amount. And hopefully you can see that on both the live view on the main camera and on the um, uh, from the GoPro as well. Next, we want to add the water in uh, the oil into there. So I've got a little jug of um, oil. It's just cooking oil, you know, stuff I've kept in the studio for, for a while. I have a little spoon in there, which you'll see the reason for that in a short while. But I'm just going to add in a few drops of water, just of oil onto the water. And if I can get them coming as little droplets like that, so much the better. But if not, I can generate those in a while. Whoa, that's a lot. That will do nicely on there. So now I've got water. You can just about see some of those appearing on the screen uh, with that. So I'm just going to try and focus in on them. There you can see they're coming into focus on there. And they're moving around, right? That's not a problem. Now we need something underneath it to act as our background on there. And you can use all sorts of things. Um, for this. Bits of wrapping paper. You've got, I've got a happy birthday wrapping paper. Uh, this is one of my favorites. It was a charity bag, but it got the union flag on it. Um, use the flag for your own country if you wish. It's just for the colors actually. Again, other types of wrapping paper. But you can also use magazines. Now, I've got here a Pixapro um, um, essential photo guide, which I will use later as part of one of my backgrounds on that. 
So I'm just going to start with something nice and simple and I'm going to put down, uh, let's go with a little bit of Christmas wrapping paper in there. Fold it up a little bit so it goes relatively flat. So I've got the, uh, the, the paper underneath. Now what about lighting uh, for this? I'm using a studio light. I'm using one of the Pixar Pro Lumi 400s uh, for this from uh, Essential Photo. I've got their trigger on there and receiver so I can actually control the light uh, from the camera. But in reality, I just want it on its lowest possible setting for this because ideally I want my um, aperture to be as wide open as possible. So I've set it to its lowest value and I'm bouncing it off a bit of white card on the, the back there just because I want diffused light. Now I could probably, I could do this by uh, putting a soft box on the, uh, on the light, putting it behind my table, but because of the space I have available for a live stream, I've decided to just bounce it off a piece of white card. It works well. So that's not an issue on there. You could do this with a speed light. Uh, you could even do it with just natural light, window light on there. Um, the only thing to caution about doing it with natural light is if the uh, the oil is moving, you can't, you have to wait for it to be static uh, if you're going to do a long exposure, otherwise it will be blurred from the motion. Right, so that's my setup. So now what I need to do is get some oil droplets underneath where my camera is. So I'm just going to try moving things around a little bit on here. And there you can start to see we've got some interesting patterns appearing. We're more or less in focus there, so I could just take the shot. Right, now what I can see on that is I'm overexposed with it. So I need to change some settings. I'm going to do this all over on the, uh, the, the screen so that you can see what I'm doing. That's overexposed, so I'm going to change my shutter speed to 6.3 on there and just try that again. Right, now that blob there I think is the imperfection on the um, um, on, on the actual basin. So I'm going to try and reframe uh, to avoid that. But right, I've got some droplets in there. Let's try and move those over into the area that I want. Right, move that around. I'll get some smaller drops, which is great. Something like that. Uh, now I've got an edge of the um, the dish, so I'm bringing that down. We can see what we're doing on here. That's looking quite good. So let's go with that. So yeah, that's now starting to look quite interesting on, on there. And you see how we get those sort of abstract images uh, created with it. Now I can change out what I've got down there for something else. Go with something like that. And that's not bad at all. I'm going to take a shot. Now I really like how with this you can see little parts of the thing reflected in the in the bubbles on there. So uh, what if I just blow on that or just get it to move a little bit? Maybe change the pattern around with that. And I can take another shot. And you see, you just keep going with this sort of thing to create a pattern that you want. Now, as I'm using Pixar Pro gear uh, to do this, let me show you something with the magazine. So what I've got here, okay, I'll switch cameras so you can see this a little bit better, uh, is a nice ad in the, uh, uh, the magazine for Studio Flash. And I'm going to use that as my background. So you can use anything really. And I fold that over something like that and force that through under there. And ideally I'd like it flatter than it is, but it's not going to do it. Something like that should do. So 
What I'm aiming to try and get now is the blue, the red, and that little bit of white in there. So I'm going to reposition the camera to get that to about there. Am I in focus? I'm going to go to live view on the screen here so I can check my focusing right, and check my framing for that matter. So I wanted the red, white, and blue, but in stripes. So blue, red, and white from it. Just move the camera a little bit. So we end up with something like that. Use the spoon to try and get a few more drops near where I want it. So that's my area. Just see what I get around there. Break that up a little bit. And as that settles, I should be able to just get a few shots of that. That's not looking bad at all. I rather like that one. I'll take another. I hope you found that helpful and interesting. If you create your own oil and water images, please share them in my Facebook group. The link is down below. And if you want uh, to watch some more videos on other techniques which will help improve your photography, there's a playlist on the screen here, and there's one here that I particularly recommend. So go and take a look at it now, and I'll see you in that next video. So thanks for watching this one, and keep making great photos. Bye for now.